All right, then uh, you're very, very welcome to the second Pirate Skills Meetup, which would be the 20th Gross CGM Meetup today on marketing automation. Thank you all very much for coming, guys. Thank you. <laughs> it's fantastic to have such a full room. Uh, this, this month, uh, I was a bit, uh, yeah, out of my rhythm because my, my new daughter was born. She's now three weeks old. And so we didn't do a lot of marketing as usually for the event. So I'm, I'm happy to have a full room as well. And uh, so let's dig in. Let's talk about marketing automation today and what we are up to. Man, thank you very much. Wow, she's, she's amazing. Her, her name is Emma. She's my, she's my second daughter. And I'm, um, yeah, hopelessly in love as a father with two daughters uh, and a nice wife. It's amazing how they can deal with everything. And my wife is wonderful as well because she is, she's actually sick and she said, Ben, come on, go do it tonight. I'm going to deal with the kids, get my stepmom uh, over and, and handle it. So thank you very much, Jana, if you're looking. So, uh, as you know, I usually start a question within the Facebook group uh, to get the next uh, topic kicked off. And, and you had quite a few questions. Let's, let's take a look at them. So you were asking, so what are the best tools for marketing automation if you're just a solopreneur? Yeah, you, were, you asked, uh, how do I add, add switch points in the funnel? Should, uh, should I start, at which points of the funnel should I start or stop automation? Like in that sense, it's always the question for me, like, do I even bother about marketing automation in, in B2C businesses? Um, what else can you automate? Uh, what, uh, how far can you automate cold emailing, which I usually don't do, but I think we have somebody here who uses uh, Growbots uh, a little bit, maybe he can share. Um, and, and how to measure the success of um, automation and the KPIs and, and how does it concretely work and I hope today that we can all together sh uh, shed a bit of light on marketing automation. I will share from my experience and I, I hope you do too. This is a meetup, everybody can at any point raise their hands, share their experience or ask a question and the live stream can ask questions as well and Snea is going to read the questions and, and we're going to hopefully uh, answer them. If I do not repeat your question, please remind me because they cannot understand it because this is a directional mic. All right, so um, I got a, quest a few questions for you which relate to marketing automation as well. Who of you, please raise your hands, if you have as a business the ability to send emails? Very basic. Yeah? This is not absolutely... Uh, sure, every time. Yeah, I, I meet some projects that don't have a MailChimp account set up or anything else that is so basic. This is often a very basic requirement for marketing automation. Uh, who can create simple landing pages for every campaign they built? Yeah, quite a few less. And um, can you set up all emails before an event? And let me qualify. Imagine you had an event in four, in four weeks. Could you set up three or four emails and do, don't touch the computer in the mail anymore and that would run automatically? Who could do that? Good. And do you have a list of your potential customers automatically generated? And to top it off, uh, can you prioritize that list based on engagement? Okay. So, and final question, can you measure the marketing uh, contribution of all campaigns um, by each campaign? Okay, so those are like questions that, that want to be answered by, by, by marketing automation. So, to me, marketing automation, many, many people have, might have different opinions, have, have different goals. And one of the primary goals is to provide a lot of value to your customers with as little effort as possible. There is no, no effort at all. It's always a lot um, front heavy with marketing automation stuff. You have to do the work in the beginning. And why do I have like this weird, weird fun shadow in my face? Uh, I think it's from the Beamer. Um, 
but there is always ways to minimize the, the, the cost later. You know? So we want to improve uh, the value we are providing with as little effort as possible. And naturally, we want to use the resources we have to improve our marketing ROI. We, we don't want to get uh, one buck ten for every buck we spend, we want to get five bucks. And how can we do that with as little effort as possible? And we want to be able to measure our marketing contributions. If we have so many campaigns going on in parallel and some email marketing series and retargeting series and push notifications, we want to know what actually affects the real ROI of, of our business. And I also want to say marketing automation is not a way to <coughs> spam people. Yeah? You were asking about automating cold emails. That is on the hard gray area of spamming people. I'm just not in that, in that business, but uh, maybe we have got some experts in that area that could really help us. Uh, if you're not doing uh, your main marketing in Germany, uh, cold emailing is still a wonderful way uh, to, to get some leads. All right, would you add some items to the list of marketing automation here for the goals? Do you have more goals for your marketing automation? No? If, if you have just, just shout in, this is not just a monologue. Yeah, please. So, um, how does it work concretely now? Um, I'm curious, like, who, who has already set up quite a nice marketing automation machine for themselves? Who would say that? Like, what do you have set up? What's your, uh, what's your setup? Well, um, I raise my mail on Lead Nursery. So yeah. I do scoring of my customers. What do you use for email sending and for lead scoring? HubSpot. HubSpot. Yeah, okay, so your main system is HubSpot, you do landing pages, A-B testing, wonderful. Anybody else who uses HubSpot here? Yeah, anybody using Marketo? No? What do you guys use back there? Uh, MailChimp. MailChimp. Okay, um, and, and for your CRM, do you use MailChimp? Do you abuse it as a CRM? It works, absolutely. Or do you have it divided? Okay. Who, who uses MailChimp to, to deliver emails here? Those are quite a lot of people. Who of you have set up an automated series of email that go out once a person subscribes? Cool. Those are pretty much all the people set up. Um, okay, so how, how does marketing automation work? It works on several levels. Um, we try to think through the whole customer journey. Um, we want to use it to capture leads. We want our ads and landing pages to, to work seamlessly together. We want to uh, manage those leads in a CRM. We want to have uh, niceties like lead scoring for our salespeople or to trigger other marketing automation uh, series. Uh, we want to engage our current users. It's, it's highly important, like you have photo community, for example, it is so important not to lose your whole customer base and to re-engagement. And this is one of the best parts of the customer lifecycle to use uh, marketing automation, not just in the capturing leads phase. And you can send them emails, push notifications, you can set up calls, do all kinds of niceties with them. And of course, at the end of the day, we want to make money. We want to measure the marketing uh, ROI and we want to have uh, channel-specific analytics, yeah? And yeah, there are many ways to, to get there. So how do we get there? And there is, to me, uh, always this, this picture that, that we can automate everything across the whole customer lifecycle. Uh, those of you guys who have been at one of my events before have surely heard of the R metrics. Yeah? Acquisition, activation, retention, referral, and, and revenue. Yeah, Dave McClure proposed this in, I don't know, 2007 in his beautiful, ugly, fugly um, slide deck. Uh, and it, it's always something that I go back to when I think about how can I automate stuff. In, in, in which um, place of the customer life cycle can I, can I do something? Can I do it while acquiring the user, while getting them on board with my product, while keeping them, which is the hardest part of all, with incentivizing them to, to import more people uh, to, the, to the app or the SaaS software, and, and to drive more revenue in the end. Because this framework is always so, it is so important, uh, but it's not, it doesn't give me ideas about what to do concretely. 
Yeah? So uh, I came up with a different way to see this framework, and I would like to share it to you with you today for the first time, I think, uh, in that version. Maybe I, you saw a preview of that on, on Facebook. Um, but uh, I would love your feedback later on, on, on how you like the idea. It's still a bit playful. We shall see. So I would love to introduce you guys to the growth <coughs> marketing treasure map. Yeah, I always had this image when I think about it, uh, about how I think about growth. It's always a journey. Always, with every project, I try to find treasure. Yeah, every campaign I start, I'm, I'm looking forward. Like, can I make money with it? Make my customers happier? Keep them longer? I try to find treasure. And to me, this journey is always like, uh, like discovering a new island where I don't know the territory yet. Yeah, but the system, how people flow, is always the same. So imagine you're a young pirate, yeah, coming here from the shore in your little tiny boat, or your big boat, depending on which state you're on. And, and you're coming here into this nice bay and land here. And now you come to the first area where you need to set land. You know there's a river which represents the customer flow. People can leave at any point in the, in, the, in the customer journey, from acquisition down to revenue here in Mount Doom. This is, this is, of course, not inspired by Modor or anything. Of course not. Uh, and, and it could also like replicate in many other ideas. You might be on an island where you're still testing an idea, but let's look at those, at those areas. So from top to bottom, um, let's look at it. So you arrive here in your beautiful boat, and you set up shop. You want to acquire some customers. People are here on the stream, and now you got to capture them. Yeah, and this is why I call uh, this here. This is the tower of analytics, of course. This comes always first with me. I don't know why, but this is the acquisition area. There, imagine like like cities or places that are called like AdWords and Facebook and email. Uh, we're gonna detail this out much more in the future. And so you have to somehow acquire them. But you have to see how you acquire them if your, if your um, campaigns are successful. This is why you go up on this beautiful tower, and, uh, which can guide you, which can look all over all the country and, and, and see how your acquisition is doing, how the other parts are doing. Now people are coming through the acquisition channel and it, it, there's no guarantee that they're going to stay with you. They have to cross a bridge, or you have to help them cross this bridge. Otherwise, they, they, they just get lost. They, they never get activated. Yeah? Um, like you might know that so many, with the photo community, yeah? so many people just registered, but they never upload their first picture. Do you have a percentage of how many people those are? Roughly 80%. Yeah, 80%. Imagine that. Like That is very typical for a very B2C uh, heavy community, and you're already in the prosumer market, yeah, a little bit. 80% uh, of people you acquire never use your product properly. Yeah, that is very normal. So we have to take this really serious. And uh, here you can th think about those areas like um, like an onboarding flow, a nice email series that helps them uh, get get um, get on with your product. Uh, it could be to avoid something like having a big fat sign up form with 18 fields on there which they have to fill out before they can actually use your product. We have to get out of the way, we have to get the flow of the users in the directions we would like them to go. And then, of course, you have to keep them. And this is the hardest part. If I would ask you how many people are still there after one month, you would probably say like 10%. Yeah. And uh, my, my app CS Go Skills has, has an even worse retention rate. It has like 5% of people who sign up every month, they stick around for the next month. This is really tough. In B2B businesses, this is much, much, there are much better scores usually. If, you're a, if you lose more than 10% of your customers uh, every year, you're dying too fast already. Yeah, but in the B2C world, it's really tough. So the idea is here that people maybe get lost in, in the drought here, in the, je in, in the desert, in the desert, desert, because you're not giving them enough, enough input, you're just leaving them alone, they just sign up and they never hear from you again, yeah? 
or you confuse them and they, they get lost in the woods somewhere. Your, your onboarding flow is com too complicated. You th you're throwing too many balls for them to catch. And they just get frustrated and you need to help them, give them clear signposts uh, to go through every <laughs> stage of your product. So, but once you get your people sticking around, you know yet that you have a quality product, yeah? And then you have a good chance that people might refer other users to you. And it's very interesting, especially with marketing automation, to, to devise ways um, that they uh, invite new users to get your viral coefficient a bit higher. Uh, ways to do that, for example, is in the App Store uh, to ask them for reviews because reviews affect your sales rank yeah, on Amazon or in the App Stores and that gets more users in. Or you can ask them to invite five friends. And you have to decide when to do what. Yeah, you have to decide the, the order of priority you want to do your automations on. And then you might get some money yeah, from them after they are retained depending on your business model. This can be way up right after the acquisition you're just selling widgets and have one time up upfront cost but most b2b businesses have mm -hmm. a more continuous revenue model with their customers and they are striving not to have them purchase once but many times in the future and then hopefully you find your treasure there and and that is that is the idea of uh, of the growth marketing treasure map and i'm really keen to hear your feedback later. We have a feedback wall outside there, uh, which I'm going to mention in the end again. But I, I would love to hear um, what you think about it, what's good, what's bad. To me, this is still much too playful. Yeah, I need to have it a more piratey, grunty, leathery feel to it. Uh, but I, I loved what the what the illustrator did with that already. All right, so <clears throat> let's put that view back. To marketing automation. At every point of the journey you can think about how can I use this. So use cases, as we said before, is an acquisition phase for, for lead generation, for lead nurturing, for customer engagement and for sales support. Sales people, this is the only thing marketing, uh, sales people like about marketing, is, is, is a bit of marketing automation that helps them close more sales. Yeah? How many of you are, in, are into B2B businesses? And, and how many are into B2C? Yeah. And um, you, will, you will notice that the B2B people are usually much more keen on marketing automation because it's worth much more to close a bigger client yeah, uh, than, than just to, to sell your $13 widget. So we want to look at those use cases and, and how, how we can concretely map out uh, uh, marketing. But there are many, many more. In, it is nothing could be stopped by uh, by your creativity, yeah. And um, there are a gazillion tools out there that will help us to to do much more uh, automated. But you might have a HubSpot, like an all-in-one solution, or you decide to put it all together in like a best of uh, breed concept. But what you always need is something like a CRM, something that manages your customers. If you're in a B2B environment without a CRM, this is the easiest quick wins you can do. You need to have a way to send emails. You need to have proper analytics suits. You need a way to send to go beyond emails, to think about push notification, in-app notification, uh, messenger bots, other ways beyond email, which is still by far the best converting uh, marketing channel uh, we have. But it, it's on the it's on the downtrend, yeah, compared to messengers and, and stuff like that. And a simple way to create landing pages without it being a huge hustle, you having to go to your developer. You just need a button like clone, split test, go. Yeah? This is the form ID, now I want some conversions tracked. So I'm curious what you guys uh, are using. You already heard some tools. Um, and I'm, I'm curious whether you are more like in the all-in-one camp or in the best-of-breed camp. So the all-in-one camp would be the people that uses like big solutions like HubSpot, Marketo, Intercom, Infusionsoft, Mixed Panel might be uh, also in that area, even though it's quite analytics-focused. Or are you putting your stuff together like 
I have my, my email, MailChimp, I got my Salesforce or Base CRM or Podio, I got my segment and Amplitude or Google Analytics for analytics, I got Unbound for my landing pages and Push Crew. So those are the two sides and I have tried to work both sides and I'm frustrated by both sides. So I'm very curious uh, like where you are on. So who of you would say they are currently more in the I got the all-in-one solution going on? Who's that? HubSpot guy? What are you using? HubSpot. What are you using? Infusion. Infusion? Mm -hmm. oh, nice. And there was somebody else raising their hand? Yeah. Salesforce. But also the marketing suit. Nice. What business are you in? What? Home night. Home like. Ah, okay. Got to look at that. Uh, like the Salesforce marketing suit, it's it's already heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. So who is more in the? I want to have. I want to mix it up myself. Yeah, I want to get the best of breed, and uh, I, I, I'll do that. So what do you use, Jonas? Um, usually Mailchimp, but I'm just new with the whole marketing automation. So Mailchimp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. What do you use, Ali? Uh, I use uh, Clever Reach as the email marketing tool. Yeah, and some CRM or analytics? Um, I have a, as analytics, just Google Analytics for everything. I own WordPress site. Okay. Yeah. And, and you over there, what do you guys use? Who raised their hand as well? Fabian, what do you use? Customer I.O. for email outreach. I'm hearing good stuff about customer I.O. more and more. Are you happy? No. no. <laughs> it's always like, uh, do I use Shopify or Magento or whatever? It doesn't matter. You're going to be frustrated either way. Yeah. And I guess it's the same with that. Um, are you happy with your HubSpot setup, uh, Daniel? Yeah. Yeah? Are you? Mostly. Mostly. What are you not happy about? Um, when it comes to customization. Customization is it's quite impossible. Yeah, yeah. What would you like to customize? Uh, many, many stuff. For example, lead flows. Lead flows. I cannot insert hidden fields in lead flows, but that's very important for my lead scoring. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. business are you in? Uh, B2B business, Internet of Things. Internet of Things. What's what's your business name? Uh, QLoud. QLoud. Okay. Yeah, so customization in all-in-one tools is by, by default really hard. Try to customize Infusionsoft. You can hire your own developer that is on full time there and they can keep Infusionsoft running well. Yeah? Same with HubSpot. It's like a huge beast you have to handle. This is for, for bigger teams most of the time. Okay, um, so from the from the MailChimp people who have a bit more experience on the MailChimp side, what are your frustrations? Who would like to share? Or are you like super happy with MailChimp? That it does everything you you like. Yeah. I think most of the time, <laughs> if you use the best of breed solution, you have problems with connecting the, the few tools together mm -hmm. to get it all automated. Sometimes you have API here and there, but you kind of connect it to each other. Yep. And you have to do it manually, half manually. This is uh, often hard. So a big problem is connecting the tools if they are just uh, best of breed. Yeah. Like <clears throat> this is this is not not a simple task, and this is one we are going to tackle um, strongly today. Definitely, how how to do that connective tissue between them. Um, how do you solve your problem currently? At the moment, uh, it's uh, often a uh, challenge that by doing it manually yeah. somehow because you don't have the time to do it all the day yeah. and uh, it would need 15 days to connect it automatically, then I do it just by hand just to get further, but it would be better to have it automated for the next time. Okay, That's yeah. The hard Whenever you notice that you keep on repeating such tests, there's, there's usually a zap for that uh, on, on Zapier or uh, another um, clever solution uh, to solve that. And this is what I'm looking at in my, my projects. 
like what what do I do repeatedly that is easily automatable? <clears throat> okay, so um, on the one hand, uh, the, the the big hotspot solution, you you get you get everything in one tool. You get good analytics across channels. You get good source tracking, for example. This is one of the hardest one to get across multiple tools because you want to know how did you initially get that lead into your system. Was it a Facebook ad? Was it uh, a trade fair? What, where did people come from and how did they convert into revenue over time later? Yeah? Tools like HubSpot and Marketo and Intercom make that insanely easy for you. Yeah? Because uh, in HubSpot or Marketo, you just build the landing page with that. Uh, the initial traffic goes there and all the emails and push notifications are picked up from there. And they can go through different uh, flows. But the disadvantage is that you're always very boxed in. That uh, if, if you are not going with the way this, uh, this tool is set up, uh, you always have to invest very highly uh, to change that. And if the next update comes, you're fucked, usually. Yeah? So now you say, oh, I want to go best of breed. I'm a developer. I can do that shit. Yeah? Now you're busy with connecting all of those tools, with connecting MailChimp and Salesforce and, and trying to do that. So there is a frustration for both sides. And uh, just as, as to, to poll your opinion, uh, now you heard the pros and cons. Who of you would rather have uh, in, all, in one solution mentioned uh, with the mentioned disadvantages? Like, who would prefer the all in one solution? And who would prefer a best of breed solution? And who the fuck does the rest want? What the fuck does the rest want? <laughs> we want to know what the single tools can do. The single tools Sorry. can do. Yeah, 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 that is important, but that would take up a couple of weeks to go through the tools of Marketo alone. So, but let's, let's look at some of the tools and, and what they're good at, yeah, particularly. So, um, let's start with the, with the all-in-one hotspot, yeah? Uh, this is a bit of everything, but it always goes like only 70% of where you want to go. Yeah, the best of breed solutions, they have, at least they, they go that step further. Um, <clears throat> it has a beautiful CRM. The CRM is for free by now, by the way. Um, I, I really like the free CRM solution of HubSpot. You can very simply integrate it like a piece of JavaScript on your page, and it gives you so much more information about your visitors. HubSpot is very good at enriching the data it is, it is collecting. Um, the template editor for landing pages sucks, but it's still yeah, better than most, I gotta say. And, and they, they differentiate between like, the templates, the call to actions, and, and you can do simple A-B testing there and, and, and try at least try to lead users across a nice flow. But it will do good lead scoring for you. Uh, so you can so I, I should probably say what lead scoring is. Lead scoring is the idea that not every visitor of your website and not every user is as interested as the other. Yeah? Imagine you would give him a score from 0 to, to 100. 0 would be no interest at all and 100, shut up and give me your money. Yeah? Uh, shut up and take my money, uh, I should say. And um, every action a user takes gets them further ahead on, on that ladder. And for example, at, at trusted shops, they, before they call you as a shop, they wait for you to surf on their site, to download <laughs> a couple of, uh, of downloads before they actually pay a salesperson, which costs a lot of money, to call you and try to close you. If, uh, it, it's a bit like, like, like dating, yeah? You want to get to know the girl before you stick your tongue in your, in your mouth. Otherwise, you will get rejected way too hard. If you close too early, it's just too expensive in the long term. Yeah? To get all kinds of weird shit with that. So, another one uh, that I currently like to use very so much. Just, yes? Uh, excuse me, um, on the lead scoring, uh, except for behavioral, what other criteria would there be? So, uh, you're asking, like, what other be um, things there would be except for behavioral? Yeah. Um, 
so I, I try to use a mixture of behavioral, demographic, and like event data, which could also like okay. go back to behavioral. So uh, I, I try to have demographic data. If you like try to sign up for the HubSpot newsletter or get one of their, um, one of their fantastic eBooks, you have to say what your name is, what your gender is, what your position is, how big your company is, um, <coughs> how many customers you have, all kinds of stuff. It helps you get a more of a demographic view of your data to get a first weight uh, of that customer. Like how high is it um, or how likely it is a customer for your product. Uh, if you're a HubSpot, you, you know they're gonna pay more than 200 bucks a month. Solopreneurs are usually out with that number. Yeah, so, uh, and the second one would definitely be behavioral. Yeah, people downloading stuff, uh, having a certain amount of um, visits to the page, a certain number of times, uh, a length, um, before I trigger, for example, with Intercom, like a, a chat widget or something. Yeah, so definitely demographic and behavioral. Um, and would you guys add, add to that? I only use those two generally. Like past behavior, if, if they are like behavior. already in the one for, but that is behavior to me. Okay, um, so let's look at intercom. Yeah, <laughs> Intercom is, uh, is, is actually more known to be a live chat widget. Yeah, yeah. On, on uh, let's say like 60% of bigger B2B American sites, you have this nice icon in the lower right corner with a smiley face on it. And it starts like a ping, yeah? It, it sometimes just stays there, sometimes it annoys you directly, and sometimes you get like 10 messages in, in five minutes, and sometimes you get no message at all. But what it actually is in the back end is a fantastic CRM. It is one of the most beautiful CRMs I have seen so far. It doesn't, not only has like, um, uh, like lead score, but also like a decay score, uh, which is really important to keep people sticking. It will tell you when a user starts to drift off, yeah? And you can influence that. He can, has a, can have a super high lead score as much as he wants, yeah? If he starts to stop using your app, for example. This is a high indicator that should trigger some marketing automation stuff. We'll get into that uh, in a bit. Yeah. So, but it does live chat and email and internet notification. I like that view of, of, of not having uh, three silos there. There's usually uh, something where you cannot, uh, that you cannot really interconnect very well. Salesforce has some nice abilities um, to, to get the chat data together with the email data. So you have one proper user history. But this is like built for that. It doesn't think in like this is email, this is chat, and this is uh, an engagement message. No, it's just messaging on three different channels. Yeah, and I, I think that is the the view that I I most need usually. Um, I, I just usually when you have like silos in in there, you're wondering like how many emails did you get already? Do I want to ping him up with a push notification as well? This solves it for you. It has great, great live chat and support tickets as well. And it's able to, to support the salespeople because if you write a chat and people are uh, asking questions, um, you get content suggested from the knowledge base already. Either the sales agent on the other side gets it suggested to, to give them high converting content yeah, based on their questions and they don't see it. Or you can, you can have the, the intercom bot working it automatically because you're sleeping at night. A person is asking a question that is clear, clearly defined in the FAQ and an intercom will automatically suggest that article to them. I, I love that. So um, if you're a very yeah, messenger dr driven um, thing with live chat, intercom is, a, is an incredible solution. They, they have a startup um, version which costs 50 bucks for 12 months. Otherwise, it's, it's quite expensive and only for B2B cases uh, relevant. But I use it, for example, for piratesguilds.com. So, mixed panel. If you're in the mobile app world, yeah, uh, this, is, this has its roots in analytics. Uh, they were, they were um, frustrated by, by Google Analytics that they only reported page views, but never the actions that happen on the page. 
right? So they thought, let's build an action-based analytics suit. But um, very soon came uh, the activity feed, and, and uh, in corresponds to that, the, the people information. So now you have the option to choose that, uh, that you want to have this person identified as a, as a single user, no matter which login he uses on his phone or on his desktop device. And you get, you get perfect user history. And you can see every action, every page the user um, had. You can uh, set up custom events if they use the download, if, if they paid you. They have good revenue tracking, customer lifetime values. And uh, what, what it does more than most other tools is also integrating notifications, which include push and email. And you can also decide not to use their emails and use something better like Mandrill, which is a like a tech version of, of MailChimp and, and just send uh, information to Mandel, please send that email, please send that email. Uh, it does a wonderful job on, on that part. It also does something for me that I very often sorely miss. It can tell you people have not done stuff in the last two weeks. So you can incentivize them to re-engage with you increasingly depending on their absence. Yeah? And once they did something, they get out of that system, and now they're in the normal flow again. Um, I really like that about Mixpanel. It is not a beautiful tool. It is a beautiful tool for visualizing funnels, for example, but as a CRM, it plain sucks. But it is a good add-on to a real CRM, for example. Uh, and it works beautifully with apps, and most CRMs just do not work with apps properly, but Mixpanel just does a perfect job. If you're pissed off by MailChimp, look at this one, Active Campaign. Who uses Active Campaign? Can I? Nobody. Okay, this is like, it was, it even existed before MailChimp, but it moved up in speed and efficiency and style very much. This is for marketing automation. It has the beautiful visualization where you just have a drag and drop editor where you can set up funnels where your users go through. Oh, he did that action, now he goes in that funnel. He does that action, now he switches it. And you have this tree of automation, uh, the if-then rules, very clearly visualized. Uh, it is email marketing that looks, if you are uh, mainly focused on marketing automation with emails, I just love this tool, yeah? But beyond, it goes beyond mention, yeah? It, it doesn't think in lists, it actually thinks in people, which I really like. And it, uh, and it has sales stages, it even has tools that rotates leads through different sales people. It is, it is quite cheap compared to Intercom, for example. It can also send in-app notifications and SMS and whatnot, and, and is quite capable of event tracking. And, and um, yeah, it, uh, it works with most tools quite seamlessly, uh, like through a segment, through a Zapier and stuff like that. So uh, crazy that nobody uses Active Campaign instead of Mailchimp. It's just a bit more expensive, but if you are in a B two B, this is a very worthwhile upgrade. Yeah. So those are a few examples of the the, the all in one. Would you like to add some? Would you like to add another all in one? Yeah. I would like to ask uh, if I am on one system and then later I decide I would like to use another one. You're fucked. Yeah. Is it possible yeah. to switch and how? Yes. Uh, so the question is, uh, should you? Then yeah, how is it possible to switch once you're hooked on one system? It is super hard with all-in-one solutions. It's super hard to switch from HubSpot to Marketo or uh, to Infusionsoft or anything, because the system knows it all. Yeah. And and the best of breeds has a tendency to see through the need of having APIs connecting the tissue. Yeah. Uh, that it's that is much easier to export your data, use another tool, but it's still hard. I would always try to to avoid it. This is why I usually start now with Active Campaign instead of Mailchimp because I know I'm going to be pissed at myself that I didn't the last time. Yeah, but um, switching is possible. Who has switched marketing automation tools in the past? Yes. Yeah. In between switching from HubSpot to Pilot. Yeah. Part, but but you can see uh, Salesforce as CRM, yeah, and only the marketing, the lead nurturing part yep. of HubSpot, and now switching to 
data security reasons, but Pardon. Yes, this is bought by Bridgeport or integrated. Okay. Yeah, it's another big player like Eloqua, Pardot, they, they are quite a huge player in that market that we haven't mentioned yet. Anybody else? Anybody else switch like CRM tools for sales? That's a bit easier than the whole marketing enchilada. Like you, you Fabian, you used uh, high rise in the past and then switched to customer IO, right? That was before your time. <laughs> Pirate Summit guys. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I could ima only imagine that it was a, a tough switch as well because there's so much information stored, like the user history. It is extremely hard to get back the user history if you don't into another tool properly again. Yeah? If, if you're using a tool like, like Segment, like as a data hub, you might have a chance of a back roll of data. We're gonna discuss that like in, in a minute. Yeah? So let me let me look at the time. So we got eight o'clock, it's nice. Um, I, I I wanna go uh, like until A45 maybe, and then have a few questions, and then go down with you guys to have a beer in the Kandinsky if you like, or you can go home, but leave your feedback before. So that was just a, a, a small preview in the all-in-one <laughs> solutions and the pros and cons, yeah? But it is of course not an all-encompassing feature look. Like just look for on SlideShare for the respective nice presentations of each company. HubSpot, Marketo, they both have fantastic one. Uh, Marketo has the best one, I think. It, it is the guide to marketing automation. It's called the Slide Deck. It's absolutely fantastic if you're thinking about it in a much bigger scope. If you're in the in the uh, small business world, yeah, yeah, it's it's too high concept, but. Uh, for the for the larger strategy, it's fantastic. It compares it to all kinds of different marketing types, um, differentiates all the features that are possible, and just the last two slides are about, are about my channel. Yeah, the rest is generally applicable to all kinds of marketing. So, if I could choose my own setup, the best of breed, yeah, I would start with this. I want a data hub. Yeah, and there are several solutions. Um, one is called Segment, which I, I I just plain love. Yeah, what you need if you do best of breed, you need one source of truth. Yeah, which feeds all the other tools the same truth, and it helps you update the tools. Yeah, and Segment is a wonderful way. If you if you this is like Google Analytics installed. Yeah, you, you put up your you install your Segment uh, snippet and do some custom tracking, of course. This is a bit for a developer, of course. And you shouldn't do the best of breed if you're not a developer, if you don't have a developer in your team at all. Um, except you, you're just going the Zapier wrong. But if you have the choice, look at this wonderful tool called Segment. Yeah, it will collect all the data about your user and send it to Google Analytics. Send it to your CRM, send it to your email provider, send it to your Zendesk help software and accepts the data from Zendesk and updates your CRM. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful and it's a much cleaner solution than Zapier, yeah, like the, the marketing automation tools that you just, just stitch together. This is very close to the truth. You can also store your data in a data warehouse on Amazon and you can crunch your own numbers on it if you like. And if you do that, you have the ability to switch analytics tools, for example, and it will just roll back all the data from the past no loss of information, <coughs> yeah? Like 80% no loss of information, right? <laughs> so, as a CRM, I would use a Salesforce. It's just 25 bucks per month per user on the cheap version, 75 per month per user on the acceptable uh, level, yeah? But, but even the 25 euro per month solution is quite capable, and if you do your own marketing automation, it, it, it's more than enough. I even used it personally for my freelancing stuff, yeah, for a while. Then I, I wanted to simplify my life and went back to travel. Um, or if you are very email marketing heavy, use active campaign as your CRM. So for email, you can use MailChimp or active campaign. You can mangle Mailchimp uh, 
to do everything you want. Yeah, it's just a bitch after a while. Like if you know, if you have some marketing automation set up and you're not sure how far they are along or you need to stop something and reactivate it later, you know what I'm talking about, yeah? MailChimp does not give you an overview of where your people actually are in the marketing automation flow at all, yeah? You just see numbers, you never see persons, yeah? Because it's, it's things in lists, not in people. Um, but you can exchange any other email or CRM. I love base CRM recently. I, I see it again and again, base CRM. It has beautiful integrations. Um, but to me, I always check the segment integration list and I check the Zapier integration list. And when they provide those two uh, factors, I'm willing to consider the software. If they do not support segment or Zapier, they're out for me because I, I don't want to do the manual shift. Yeah? So for A-B testing, I recently fell in love with Google Optimize before I used uh, VWO, before I used uh, Optimizely, uh, which is now uh, a quite expensive tool. Who uses Optimizely here in, the, in this room? VWO or Google Optimize? What do you use? Google Optimize. How do you like it? It's new. Yes, yes I really like it. Yeah, I, I just, it's so simple to set up. It's a clone of Optimize from Google, essentially, just a bit yeah. buggier. Uh, and and what, what else do you guys use for A-B testing and landing page building? Just shout it. What does the live stream use? When it, when it comes to uh, landing pages, it's yep. a Thrive theme. So we Thrive do theme so yeah, for WordPress. WordPress. You do that the same? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thrive themes is quite a good WordPress uh, theme for, for A-B testing and building simple landing pages. I used a lot of Unbounce in the past. Yeah, uh, it's a landing page tool with very strong A/B testing features, and and the other mentions. But currently, just use Google Optimize. It just it, it works so well with with Google Analytics, and you can take the audiences from Analytics and use them Optimize and tell them only the people on desktop, only the people on uh, that came from that and that source. It's fantastic. Yeah, and offer them different tests. Especially if you're not, uh, like if you're not a developer, you can use it quite quite easily. Yeah, but it, it helps to understand some HTML and CSS. Yes, please. Yeah, one question on the A/B testing. Uh, as far as I understand or infer from what you are telling us, yeah. uh, the A/B testing takes place on the landing pages only, or is it possible also to A/B test further down? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But first, before I answer it, can we please like open the windows and then turn on the air conditioner? <laughs> Like there are air conditions all the way there. If you guys could just turn uh, on the windows. We don't have the beautiful sky to see there anymore, but, uh, but air is always a good thing. So the question uh, was, uh, do we do um, A-B testing only on the landing page or can we do it deeper in the funnel? Yeah? So, um, for example, MailChimp has quite a good way to A-B test uh, emails, <laughs> yeah, they they do it on, on three levels. I think you can you can A/B test subject lines, which is the easiest thing to do to improve your open rates, yeah, and you can split test content, and you can split test by different segments of your of your list, yeah. So email split testing, push notification split testing is absolutely possible with mixed panel. And, and you should always do it. Like, why should I send a push notification out to 100% of my people? Just send it out three versions to 10% each, and then send the best one out to the other 70%. Yeah. So uh, I love B to A/B testing as deep as possible in the funnel, but the uh, but the top of the funnel is always most worthwhile because the benefits trickle down to all the different stages in the user lifecycle. If I go to the marketing treasure map and I find something out at the top, it will affect all the other parts of the uh, of the map. So um, that is, but, but of course I would do it. But it also depends on the amount of traffic you have. You have to have significant amounts of emails, landing page visitors to make those tests viable. Uh, one of the things I don't like about Google Optimize, for example, 
it has you wait two weeks for, for definitive results. You can look at the data and say, yeah, this is statistically significant. Fuck you, Google. Uh, let's just go with that test. But it will not conclude it before two weeks or after that and that amount of data. I, I hope they're going to change that. And for all the connecting tissue, I love to use Zapier. I, I, I know businesses, also here from Cologne, they have a dangerous amount of Zap set up. I think the whole business is going to collapse if, if, if the Zapier, ever, if Zapier ever, ever breaks down. But now they have this nice replay function. So Zapier is a tool that helps you uh, connect those tissues. And I've got a couple of slides lined up uh, afterwards to explain it. It is one of the simplest, simplest tools for marketing automation. And, and I just use it for all kinds of stuff. Yeah? But it is, it is a cheat, definitely. It is not the clean solution. Segment is the clean solution. Whenever I can do it with segment, I use segment. Whenever I can't, I use Zapier. Okay? What do you, you guys use for automation cheatery? If this, then that, or, or what do you guys use? Work command, there are quite some. There's an app called Workflow. I wanted to change my marketing automation to my phone. I tried it a few times and gave up. So, uh, no, no experiments there yet. Um, then, let's, 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 let's look at some examples of marketing automation, okay? Um, so this is Zapier. Who of you has, has, know, has known of, of Zapier, has heard of it? Okay, and who has used it in the past? Okay, like who is like a crazy user of Zapier? Okay, like what's your craziest zap? Yeah. Well, it's not crazy, but it's super useful. And I would also say it's like, it doesn't suffice the same purpose as a segment. For example, if you connect new addresses, you can add them to MailChimp, you can add them to your CRM and all that kind of stuff. And you also get a Slack notification. Yes, like that. that's a very popular one. Combinations and uh, it triggers, or add something to Google Sheets. Mm -hmm. So, so you are helping HubSpot along a little bit with segment, right? What do you use, for example? And uh, what do you use as for Zaps? What kind of Zaps do you use? Uh, my biggest Zap is about thirty steps. Thirty steps Zap. <laughs> Like, uh, you see, like, there's a trigger, something happens, and then you got an action. And you got, like, 30 action happening based on one trigger. Yeah, and what does it do? It uh, pushes news <laughs> around, I think, about everybody I know, and into all social channels. Pushes news? Social it's like a PR tool. Okay. It's like just pushing a message out yeah. to the world. So do you use like an RSS feed as the trigger or what do you use as the base trigger? When I write a new blog article. Okay, so he writes a new blog article and he has it automatically post to all the right PR channels. Yeah? Could you mention a couple of those channels? Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Sync. Um, the non-obvious ones? Yeah, Slack. Um, Slack, Microsoft Teams, personal emails. Many personal emails. Ah, you send them to personal emails? Yep. And um, I'm posting it on some other minor networks in the dark web. Okay, cool. So he used it as to, to, to take this one article he has put much effort in and to increase the value he gets out of each article. So let's, let's look at, at some of those zaps. Um, so let's say this is this. Those are a few for for engaging your market. Yeah, Aut automatically share your latest blog post on Twitter. This is something you just mentioned, or uh, automatically post the latest tutorial video from your YouTube channel on your Facebook page, or uh, use the Facebook lead ad to grow your news that on Mailchimp. And they're just triggers. People signing up with the Facebook lead ad. Now do something with that. Add them to my MailChimp, add them to my Salesforce. It has beautiful Salesforce integration and, and HubSpot integration. It's like one of the only automa marketing automation tools that, that has proper Salesforce integration. <clears throat> or another example would be um, how to stay organized. Yeah? Like uh, key, key deals updated in your sales uh, funnel. This is a pipe drive example. Something happens, add that to the activity of that user in your sales funnel. 
or um, put them, yeah, keep the sales team updated by turning support tickets from leads in, into pipe drives. So you have a current customer who had a complaint, you send it to your Zendesk, they fulfilled the support request, and now the salesperson is due to call the guy again and he knows about the problem that the customer had in the past. That is not easy to do, usually, if you are in the best of breed world. If you have it all in your HubSpot, it, it goes, but try to do support with HubSpot, it just plain sucks. Um, create a log of signed sales contracts that update automatically with new signatures and send them to a Google Doc. Google Doc is like the universal tool of Zapier. You can put anything you like into a Google Doc, update it there, and, and use the Google Doc as a source, for example, to send an event to Google Analytics, which is fantastic to me. Like, you can have real offline events happening, send it to a Google Doc, and the Google Doc will trigger an event in Google Analytics. That is really hard to do without those zaps, and they're just introducing Google Analytics as a, as a beta right now. It can also send it to segment, which informs every tool at once. So, um, another example is, is this, the work smarter. Like you ask, like, what else can you automate? Um, it is very popular to send stuff to to-do lists and to Slack. <coughs> yeah? um, you have a con conversation on whichever platform, you just send it to to-do's, a uh, to-doist, um, or, or on Slack with, a, with an ad symbol and a special keyword in your Slack group. Who of you uses Slack? Like, I, I guess the amount of Zapier users with Slack is much higher because the Slack functionality is just, is just fantastic. And, and you can do all of crazy stuff, like people tagging you on Facebook, just save that image on Dropbox, for example. Yeah? You can, all those small things in your life that you would like to automate is, is possible there. We cannot go through everything, um, but just surf the app directory of Zapier and just see uh, what's, what's possible. Just put in your CRM, your email thing, and just get inspired of what's, what's possible in the marketing automation world with Zapier. If the app shouldn't work for some reason, you have the ability to replay it later. It also does it automatically. It had some problems in the past and that was one of the functions how, how it solved those problems. Because some companies are really dependent on people going from one stage to another led by, um, led by Zapier. A popular one I, I often see with teams for organization is, is updating the Trello board. Let's say you have a Slack channel, you define a to-do, it lands in the Trello board and it gets assigned to a person. Now, if, if the person does it and says something on Slack, it gets to the next stage on the Trello board, if you're, you, if you're working like in a Kanban style, like an inbox doing done, you know? Or if you have six sales steps, it automatically updates those and the, the CEO or the sales manager can see where every lead is and you don't have to manually update your Trello, your Trello board every time. So, Okay, so let's look at some concrete, as concrete as possible, um, steps for each step of the funnel from the top of the map, the lead generation phase, down to revenue. Yeah, how, how we can use simple automations, just examples to get you inspired. In, if you have other examples, please <coughs> mention them. Yeah? Okay, I'm just going to give some of mine and then you can, you can fill up the rest, okay? So... Uh, one of my favorite ones by far is a Facebook lead ads, bam, gets um, imported by Zapier and sent to MailChimp. It is, for some reason, the, even the official way to get your leads from Facebook uh, into, into MailChimp. Yeah, if you, uh, like lead ads are those beautiful ads where you, where you don't even leave Facebook to go to a landing page, but just get a pop-up within Facebook and your name and your email and your phone number and your address is already filled out. Yeah, it has a very high conversion rate because there is much, much less hassle to get those people. For example, if you, uh, if you could sell like a digital version of your product or uh, you have a, a free lead magnet that they can download, this is a beautiful way to get them. 
but now you want to have them somewhere. It could be Mailchimp, it could be Salesforce, anything would go there at the end uh, with the Zapier. Um, but let's go the landing page route. Let's say you have a Facebook ad that goes to an unbounced landing page. Yeah? Unbounced collects the leads, Zapier collects it, sends it wherever I like, in this case, um, Salesforce. If there is, a, if there is a, a native integration, I will always prefer that over Zapier because it's much more stable. Yeah? But this is the next best thing. Another one would be, you have a nice website, you got Zoomy installed and uh, it has the smart pop-up, people are surfing for a certain amount of time, you pop it up and it sticks at Zoomo. Oh, you can collect it there with uh, Zapier and send it and create a new lead in Intercom, for example, which triggers a series of emails or notifications when people um, join your site at a later stage, which is wonderful. Uh, like with, with this, this that, uh, um, website, Zoomo pop-up, Zapier to MailChimp, for example, I collected from, I think, 16% of all website visitors the email. Yeah? Uh, it, we have nice split testing here in the Zoomo pop-up thing. This is another place to, uh, to test with the pop-ups you use if you ever want to do evil pop-ups. They, they, I'm so sorry to use them, but they just work. Yeah? If people stop putting in their emails, I will stop using pop-ups. So, um, another one would be, which is really nice, you get mentioned on Twitter. I don't have time to check my Twitter, but I'm in my Slack channel all the time. And Slack has a mean way to always get to me. Yeah, it sends me a nice push if I don't read it, it sends me an email, it has the best follow-up marketing automation I know across anything. Um, so I know when I get mentioned on Twitter, I get a, I get a Slack message, you know, very important to me. Um, if I write a blog post, I can send it out through anything. This is one of the most valuable things you can do because you might not take the time every time, but this tool is simply consistent. Set up 30 channels where your blog post goes into and it will send it every time. Yeah? Okay, those are like my ideas for lead generation apps. A few examples I use. What can you guys come up of? What, what have you used in the past? What worked? Please. Oh yeah. Close to Mailchimp forms or something like that because it gives you more flexibility, in particular with Zapier. So you use Typeform. So what do you ask your people? I mean, for us, we uh, test, for example, different value propositions to figure out what they're interested in, for example, and we then also ask them if they want to be added to our newsletter. Yeah. Depending on this, we either add them just to the CRM or to Mailchimp. Yeah. Typeform also has a wonderful API to work with. It's quite cheap. Like it has a big free version, but the paid version is not that expensive. Uh, it, they are by far the most beautiful and most converting forms I know on the web. Does anybody know a better solution than Typeform? I would love to hear it. Google Forms is okay. Yeah? But if you ever know, please let me know. Typeform, Typeform, Typeform. Anybody else? All right, so uh, I got one more. Let's imagine you want to do something behavior-based. Yeah, you can wait. This is not a Zapier one. Yeah, this is a lead generation automation that's that's very typically done by Intercom. Let's say you have your B2B landing page. People are going to your pricing page, checking it out for more than 30 seconds. You know you got a really interested guy. Why not ping him there and then? If you if you ping him before, he might never reach your pricing page and get engaged. But um, you can ask them, like, do you want a custom code for your business? Just chat with me right now or start something like that. You can have behavior set up like so many pages visited and then ching, so you're not that annoying. You're not that guy that sends out 10 intercom widgets before you ever reach page two. Yeah? You can be very deliberate with that. Uh, so man, let me go back for you. So, um, Lead nurturing is the next phase. Now you acquired some customers, you got, them, you got them in your system. People just don't straight convert to customers once they are lead. You need to help them along. Yeah? And the, the more time and more patience you have compared to your competitors, 
the more trust you will build, the more likely it is that you will win in the long run. So the most typical one is, guys, subscribe. <laughs> You send them an email marketing automation. This is why I asked, like, who has set up an, an automate, automation series? There's, there's no reason not to have this set up. That if, you have a, if you have an email list, yeah? Why not just write three emails that goes once every two weeks in your save for the next six weeks? You have six weeks to write the fourth email, yeah? And then two weeks to write the, the, the fifth and the sixth. And I would never ever stop with that. You will notice that some of your emails in that series will convert less. Just kick them out or put them further back. And some will be awesome. Put them further to the front. Yeah? To have a very simple automation series. This is the best and cheapest lead nurturing automation thing. And no, you don't need to have any uh, development background for that. So. Let's be a bit more funny, yeah? Let's say you have high ticket uh, customers where it's really worth spending some time. They subscribe, and as soon as they subscribe, Zapier gets it, sends a Slack notification, you stalk them, yeah? Or maybe you have a tool like Drift or some data aggregation tool, stalk them, yeah? There's some fantastic ones like, like Drift, like Clearbit, they just look for their LinkedIn profile, their company, their position, the size of the company, and it will enrich it. But you might engage in some manual action, yeah, and stock them yourself. Because now they are warm. They are really warm. They have just converted and you want to give them a nice call. Oh, I saw you sign up for my Juju and you actually know which all the pages they visited before. Yeah? And you know their lead score, you know they've been a customer in the past and you give them a nice call, say hello, or send them an email if you're not comfortable with calling them, yeah? Uh, that's a good one. So, a guy is on your website, SEO traffic worked somehow for you, and they download something. And they can zap, update your CRM, and give him a higher lead score. Like for each, uh, for each ebook they download, they get five, five magic points, yeah? And the more magic points they have, the more you know that you gotta call them, yeah? And that the time invest in stalking them, and calling them, and do something very custom for their specific needs is, is uh, that's very, very worthwhile. So what do you guys do for, for lead nurturing, yeah? Um, what, what helped, what helped in the past? I would love to know from the, face, uh, from the Salesforce marketing, um, what, what they use to, to nurture the leads. What do you do? Maybe later. Maybe later. Okay, no problem. We got the beer downstairs waiting for us. So what does the rest of you guys do? So with the HubSpot people, how many emails do you send your uh, customers before you call them? <coughs> yeah. Five emails over which period of time? <coughs> and what do you send them? What, what kind of content do you send them? Hints on interest content, on your white papers or... White papers, good content. That, that is the typical stuff, but that is not obvious for everybody who hasn't done that yet. What do you, you do? So, um, we, are, we are doing it on the B2, B2C uh, sector, but yep. you know, So you nurture your lead by reminding them to fill out their profile. Yeah. Who else does that? LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, try to set up a fake account there just for fun and, and see how much they bug you until you've filled out your profile because it's, it's such a high signal of that you're going to stick around, that you are more findable, that you are more likely to, to interact with the platform um, itself. All right. So the next step, you got the lead acquired, they got the lead nature, nurtured, now you want to keep them. That is the retention phase. Yeah? You don't want them to get lost in the desert, nor do you want to have them stuck in the woods. So what can you do here? I, I get more like principles here. 
the two basic principles I have is user does stuff and you send them a message like an email yeah that is the most basic one they filter out their profile you say congratulations you filter your profile you're the best guy ever you are the most amazing profile we have on our platform yeah user did not do stuff yeah this is might be even the more important one yeah and, and from from my background I'm a psychologist I always think in carrots and sticks yeah and I, I want to help them enjoy my product but I know that they're busy yeah and their life gets in their way I just got a kid and you can't imagine all the things that get in your way it's amazing and I just need a reminder yeah that I need to follow up that I, I need to fill out, uh, fill out the next form that I can take this next action that helps me get what I want from your product yeah? and whenever he reaches a milestone just send him something like look at all those Fitbit examples yeah maybe they are overdoing it a little bit but to think a bit in, ga in gamification terms uh, and to, to make the process not like oh I, you've got to do 30 steps before you get value out of this product no help him along every three steps give him a little carrot if he doesn't do it give him a little stick yeah don't do it too much, otherwise they will unsubscribe. Yeah, and the unsubscribe rates always decide for me like how much more or less I'm going to send. As long as the unsubscribe rate is not high enough, I don't have a fixed number in my head, but as long as not more than half percent unsubscribe, yeah, after the message, um, I, I will send more often. And if more unsubscribed, I will send less often, or I will try to do a better job with the content of my message. So, um, another one that you mentioned is a feedback form, yeah? Or like any kind of web form. I personally prefer to use type form. When you, uh, you, when you get um, the call to action to give feedback uh, for this meetup, it will lead you to type form, and you can check it out. And it, it's connected to Zap that goes into a Google Doc and I got a nice overview and I can even score you and, and send a Slack notification if the score is below something I don't want yeah so I get it in my face so that it's not in some weird database somewhere but um, that, that I really receive the complaints or whatever it is yeah so I got the, I used this universal tool called Google Docs which is really like the it's amazing how much you can put in there and, and get out of that. You can even use um, Google Doc as an API. Yeah, you can reference all your apps to certain elements in a Google Doc. Um, you don't even need to use Zapier for that. <coughs> Alrighty, now we got the people engaged. We, we supported them along the way. We just had to set this up once and it will run for us. Now we want to close the guy. Yeah, this is now B2B market, uh, B2B area. Of course, uh, with the B2C, it's usually just continue nurturing them until they convert, because you can usually never afford to hire a 20 sales guy to, to help people sign up for uh, the premium uh, for a photo community. But um, what you can do, you can have, uh, you can help your, um, your guy by, if you have a lead form on your website, update, the CRM, create a new contract or update it if they already have an entry there. Uh, this is, seems super simple, but I see it not done. Um, then help them prioritize the sales by, uh, the, the leads by probability, either by lead scoring or by just by engagement values. Um, those big tools will usually automatically do that for you, but you can set up your own criteria. But this is what would really help a sales guy. Sales guy hate marketing people and marketing people usually hate sales guy. I do not believe in that. I, I full heartedly believe in a fully integrated marketing, business, design and product development uh, team. But that's usually not the truth out there. Yeah? Uh, but this is something that, that they would actually like from, from us marketing guys. Yeah? Then um, show user activity it is very very helpful to know what has what the user has done, <laughs> what support tickets they they have had and solved or not solved. Once your guy calls them, 
And uh, if you can go as far as to suggest the right content at the right time, like Intercom does it, for example, uh, Marketo does it also quite well. Um, does HubSpot do it? I don't know. Like suggest it to you as an agent what content could fit for that specific? No? Only with workarounds. Yeah. Uh, there's always work with that. Yeah, definitely. But uh, um, this is highly interesting. Imagine you're yeah, like you're a car sales guy. Somebody comes in, you would just mention your name, you could already tell like which Porsche configurator pages, yeah, they already used like 20 times. The 781, and they say, oh, that's shit, no, let's go with the Carrera S, but he never looked at the turbos. You, you know, you don't have a chance to sell them up to that level, but you might convince them to get a nice Cayman or a nice 911 S. Who knows? Uh, but you know, you know. So, uh, and just another level I wanted to help you think about is Messenger. And um, a lot of marketing moves to Messenger. Like it, it's nowhere near where email is, but it feels like email in 1997. Yeah, 90% open rates, 50% click-through rates. It's fantastic. Nobody can stand an open Messenger notification number on their phone. Yeah. It's, ah, Get into this game as early as possible. It doesn't convert as good as email, but it, uh, yeah, it, it, it gives you a light way. I, I consider it an email light subscriber. Yeah, uh, email light because it, I don't fully own it. It still more belongs to Facebook than to me. The email I can take wherever I want. But um, yeah, what can you do with it? You can have your users subscribe to your messenger. Um, by, by asking them something through a Facebook ad or whatever. We'll discuss all of that stuff in the next meetup, which is all about messenger bots. And you can add it to a sequence, which is just uh, what is with the marketing automation. You, they, you get a series of, of emails, uh, of, of cards, and you answer those cards in your messenger, and based on what you answer, you get different cards in the future. Yeah? Or you can just interact as a human. So uh, what else can you do? Uh, when you have a new post or video and that is really important to you or let's say you start a live stream That would be a good time to uh, send a message to your messenger subscriber base Which will give you the initial traction for Facebook for example or Twitter um, To get much much more exposure than you would usually get because the, the first few minutes is a highly sensitive time for a post or a video if, if those platforms notice that you, that you get above average interaction and interest and that you start sessions yeah, with that. Session, starting a session means people were not there and they start with your video or your post on the platform. Platforms will always highly, highly um, um, help you with reach and, and support that kind of behavior. And if you have a push notification, you can just set out and just an above average amount of people watch your video, it's, it's amazing. If you send it out with an email, you can see a big spike after two hours and a drop down after eight hours. Yeah, and this is a time where most people open, but you don't, you don't have minutes, yeah? Um, another way you could use is people are starting the opening the chat window with you in Facebook Messenger. And you can send yourself a Slack message, for example, that one of your users is actively engaging with you right now and you can watch them use the bot or you can go and step in manually which is much more interesting to me in a B2B environment just use the, the bot stuff for the basics and just to keep in touch and to, have, uh, to, to be even allowed to contact them but use as much manual engagement in a B2B environment as you can afford you know? and I guess uh, as, as, as soon as yeah, more younger, now still younger people grow up to be the people that are buying and selling B2B stuff. The more people will hang out here in those kinds of uh, channels. With every client I have, I have a WhatsApp group or a messenger group with every single one. I used to have Slack groups with everyone. Now it's a messenger group. <laughs> everyone. Because it's such a convenient zero time delay um, tool. And of course you can also identify the, the user. User does something in your app 
and then you can ask the database, or the Zapier actually does that for you. I didn't put in the Zapier word there because it didn't fit in the line. Um, and it says, like, find me that user on Messenger. Now, don't send in the message via push or email. Send it into their Messenger box. That is amazing. As long as it is highly relevant and personal to them, you can really level up your trust level with your customers and increase the engagement. Just crazy. Okay, but we'll talk about that next time. So, this gave us an overview to the whole journey. Like, customers are flowing, they, they might drop off here because they never get activated, they might get lost in the woods and drift off here, but hopefully they, they add a lot of more users to your funnel, or they, 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 they get through the test of truth in Mount Doom and, and give you the cash and you find the treasure, yeah? All right. If you're interested in this growth marketing treasure map model, we have a little event on the side be, beyond the usual flow here in this room. Uh, the, the Echo Verband has this called Internet Woche um, in a couple of days. And there I want to dig deep into that concept of the treasure map. I would highly, highly, highly like your feedback on the shit. Yeah? It is, it is a crazy idea and I don't know if it's even worth pursuing. So if you would like to join us there, you're very, very welcome on the October 16th Lichtstraße 43. So, but I got something else for you. But before, some questions. Um, I have a question because we are talking about this tool and if I want to uh, test them out initially, but if I uh, see the landscape of the existing IT system, I see SAP and all the other ERP systems. Yeah. No, I have no experience there uh, with like a big SAP system integrating in a modern marketing automation system. Anybody here from you guys from the live stream who can connect with Georg, who, who knows how to go from like an SAP or integrating with a uh, big corporate system into a modern marketing automation system? No clue. Sorry. All right, uh, if you have a clue, like connect with Georg uh, afterwards. So, um, yeah, I keep on getting asked, like, Ben, do you know a growth guy, yeah, who could, who could help us out? And this time I got full-time jobs for you, if you like. Um, maybe, who has been to, to the Gedanken Tanken event on, on the content marketing? Yeah, quite a few. So, you know the office, you know they have a nice atmosphere there and uh, a cool team. <laughs> And uh, what Gedanken Tanken does, it is like the German TED Talks, yeah? They, they, they have these this events where a speaker is presenting a series of ideas and they have some education products in the trainer business and um, I, I optimized a, a part of their analytics. Um, so I got some insights and I've worked with them and I, if I would be looking for a job, I would probably ask Alex. Um, to get hired there. Um, so they're looking for a head of growth or performance marketing uh, that has senior experience in, in, in managing people. They don't have to be the most operational experts in all the channels, but uh, to have like managed teams and, and has a good overview over the whole marketing channels. And they're looking for a head of product who's supposed to work closely with the growth guy and they're looking for online marketers uh, on the specific domains that they usually use, uh, like like ClickTip, like uh, DigiStore, like um, uh, Facebook ads and AdWords. Yeah. So if you're interested, uh, there's a domain www.gedankentanken.com uh, slash jobs where you get all the details. They have a fantastic brand video and I promised Alex uh, to, to send you guys a mail in the thank you email where you get a bit more information and you get the links there. Anybody here from the room like interested in a job in the growth area? It doesn't need to be Gedanken Tank, but I'm just curious. Anybody who's looking for work in that area? Because I usually have more work than I can handle. Yeah, you live it? Yeah, okay. okay. So, um, those were the jobs I might have. If uh, you want to get in touch, uh, talk about this, continue the conversation, have ideas. Um, 
here is my, my handle where you find me everywhere. You can um, call me or add me on, on WhatsApp or send me an email. Um, if you have an idea for a talk or a topic that you would like uh, us to do here, please just get in touch and, and write me a message. If you have a suggestion for a nice speaker, yeah, uh, let me know. Or if you have an, a field of expertise that, that fits in this whole bit of nerdcore growth marketing theme or um, in that area, please let me know. Just give me a call, okay? So, um, that leads me uh, to like your last questions on the, on the content-wise before we go into uh, the feedback. Uh, would you like to discuss some of the topics today even further? Or do you have a specific question where people from the audience can maybe help? We can solve that during beer. Yes, please. Just one short one. Um, so I saw this whole set of rules that you showed to us. And uh, um, the thing that comes to mind is, um, and what I did not get from your talk, is uh, what is the tool to orchestrate that? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so the tool to orchestrate it. Like uh, a HubSpot and a Marketo are going to help you to orchestrate your bigger marketing campaigns uh, but this is usually still done like by humans um, but you need a rule engine or something that tells you what to do in each case so we have to do a single rule yeah. but they don't always apply yes true so you have to sort of keep a, a rule monetary. interesting idea do you guys have a solution for that do you have something like that I don't I don't I use it like on a per channel, per tool basis. I have my rule sets, yeah? I know in which stages I, I set up my, my Facebook campaigns, for example. I do it pretty much the same all the time. Um, and then I get creative in the way I target and, and creative and, and that kind of stuff. But there's no general rule book or a tool to orchestrate. Maybe that's a nice product to build. Good answers for that questions, better than my awful one. All right. Uh, any other questions? So um, then I would like to invite you. We, we have several forms to give feedback. Uh, one is here and now. Yeah? So to help me improve this series, do you have any kind of feedback here and now that you want to give briefly? Thumbs up? <laughs> Otherwise, you can use the feedback board outside. We have a board with four fields, a plus sign for what's good, a minus for what's better. The lower left has a trash can for stuff that we can just leave out. Um, and the lower right for stuff where you have ideas. Okay, so just use the feedback board for that. Or use this link, uh, bit.ly pirates slash pirate skills life, and you get to that type form, yeah? And if you want the slide deck, uh, you can get it here at bit.ly slash marketing dash automation dash slides. Do we have to fill in the form? No form. It's <laughs> just, you can, you can even completely download it from SlideShare. Yeah, I set it up free and it's, uh, it's under a Creative Commons Attribution License. You can use it however you like. You know? I will definitely put that in the in the thank you email as well, for sure. Okay, guys, then uh, thank you very much. Please uh, join me for the beer downstairs in Kandinsky. Already go ahead. We reserved some seats there, and I will just clean up and and come after you. See you next time on November eighth for Messenger Bots meetup. All right, bye-bye, that was it. <laughs>